Hello there and welcome. In this video I'd like to talk about general analog filter concepts. You know, just stuff you can do with filters. As a demonstration tool I will use the Marineback VC Multimode Filter A. While this is a high precision 5U modular synth module, the information in this video also applies to filters of other formats, so stick around even if you're into AE modular, search, Eurorack or something else. Looking at the front panel we see a common filter layout. At the very bottom there are five sockets, one input for the audio signal and four outputs for the filter modes, low pass, band pass, high pass and notch. Up top there is a cutoff frequency control with a direct CV input and another CV input through an attenuator. Below we have the resonance control, which is called emphasis here because resonance emphasizes the cutoff frequency, which is usually done by adding internal feedback. Something that makes the marine back filter stand out here is that the low bassy frequencies are not reduced when resonance is added, which is something many other filters suffer from. The lowest row of knobs and CV inputs controls the so-called notch structure, which lets you smoothly morph between low pass, notch and high pass filtering on the notch signal output. Applying LFO modulation lets you create deep sweeping sounds, for example, but the module also accepts audio rate modulation, of course. The stereo effects you can achieve with two marine back filter modules or a multi-track recording of one of them are also cool. The notch structure feature is quite unique to the marine back filter, but there is more that makes this module a bit more special and great as a reference device. First here is a seemingly small thing which I found has a great impact on usability, the resonance knob response. Marineback designed it in a way that when you are turning the knob there is always something happening to the sound and you can turn the filter into self-oscillation very, very smoothly. Many other filter modules have resonance knobs with an uneven response, which can be annoying because you might slip into harsh self-oscillation abruptly, messing with your performance. All knobs on the Marineback module are original high-quality Alps potentiometers, by the way, which leads us to another unique selling point of this filter, the Marineback typical analog precision circuitry. As you might know, turning the resonance of a filter up until self-oscillation will usually get you a sine wave at the low-pass output, which you can play like any other VCO using the cutoff knob and the CV inputs. Marineback did not leave it at that though, they wanted to make their sine wave useful for musical play and analog FM synthesis, which requires very pure sine wave forms with 1V per octave tracking and a stable amplitude. Here is a very simple demonstration of the Marineback filter's self-oscillation sine wave modulating another sine wave VCO via linear FM. Let's get a bit more nerdy now and measure the marine back filter's 1V per octave tracking. I'm feeding the filter cutoff CV input a constant control voltage which I'll increase in 1V steps. With each added 1V, the frequency of the sine wave should double. 
To make it easy to follow, I've tuned the filter's starting frequency to 100 Hz at 1 volt. Ok, 2 volts. Let's zoom in a little. We're at 199.2 Hz, so basically 200 where you want to be. At 3 volts. We're at 400 Hz. Nice. At 4 volt, we're at around 802 Hz. 5 volt. 1600 Hz. 6 volt, 3200 Hz. Very good. 7 volt, 6320 Hz. So we're drifting off a little bit, but listen how high the pitch is already. 8 volt, 12100 Hz. Okay. Let's drop my bench power supply to 0 volt now. And 50 Hz. Cool. These measurements would even be awesome for a VCO module, but we're still talking about just a filter here. Also check out how the amplitude of the sine wave stayed stable. This means that you will get solid FM modulation in both the frequency and amplitude domains, over a wide octave range. Let's look at the settling time now. When modulating the filter cutoff frequency with stepped CV, like a 1V per octave pitch signal for example, we have hard CV level jumps between the notes. The settling time describes how quickly the filter reacts to these abrupt changes. If it's too slow, you will hear glide or portamento effects, which again can affect certain musical applications of the filter. Here's an oscilloscope snapshot of that last big CV drop, which is probably higher than we will realistically deal with in a musical synthesizer patch. As you can see, there is no additional swinging or other weird stuff happening at the control voltage drop. The waveform goes from high to low frequency quickly and stably, in less than 50 microseconds. Ok, that was some serious nerd talk right there. Let's check out filter pings now, which can be used to synthesize water drop sounds, wooden hits or simply to emphasize percussion. To ping the filter, I'm exciting it with a trigger signal to its audio input, using a super fast linear envelope from the Marineback Envelope Generator B module. This envelope is less than one millisecond long, which is a lot faster than many other envelopes can be. Why make it so fast? Well, because as we have seen, the filter can react super quick as well, so Marineback decided that it only makes sense to make their ADSR quick too. Anyway, let me ping this filter now. As you can see, the filter's response to the ping is basically without delay and it is stable, just like we expected it to be. The filter signal is also inverted compared to the incoming ping signal, which is typical for analog filter circuits. Now let's use a longer trigger, which is more in line of what other analog synthesizers are capable of. As you can see, the filter ping waveform is being offset for the duration of the trigger, after which it will start oscillating around 0 volt again. This is also common analog filter behavior. Another thing we see is a little overshooting towards the end of the trigger. This is due to the AC coupling of the audio input. AC coupling removes undesired constant voltage offsets, which is important for audio processing, which is what this filter was made for. The more resonance we add to the filter settings, by the way, the higher the first impulse of the ping sound. This can be useful for emphasizing percussion sounds. Ok, let's circle back and look at another topic, the phase shift of the different filter modes. Here in yellow is a sine wave from a VCO. Light blue is the low pass filter output showing the inversion we have already witnessed. Reducing the cutoff frequency now will not only filter the sine wave, but also shift the phase of our low pass output. Let's add the band pass output in magenta now to our oscilloscope. The band pass is shifted 90 degrees from the low pass. And finally, in dark blue, the high pass, which is shifted by 90 degrees again. This is also typical analog filter circuit behavior and also desired mostly as it gives us some fun sound design possibilities. One trick you might know of that takes advantage of this is to turn up the resonance to self oscillation and then patch the band pass output back into the cutoff CV input. This turns the sine wave from the low pass output into a sawtooth wave. Of 
course, we can use this without self-oscillation as well. Here's the pulse wave from a VCO through the low-pass filter with cutoff modulated by the bandpass output again. Let's add some slow LFO modulation to the cutoff. Sweet, we've turned the static pulse wave into a moving resonant pulse sawtooth mix. Alright, I hope this video gave you some interesting insights in analog filter behavior and inspired you to try them out in different ways. Regarding the Marineberg VC Multimode Filter A, I think it's a great sounding and very versatile module, with its notch structure feature, the 1V proactive response and its general precision, which is quite uncommon in analog designs. It's a truly modern analog synthesizer module and it sets itself apart nicely from the classics we have all heard millions of times already. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and like, share and subscribe with that bell for more videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.